Good morning, everyone. It's Alexor again. And let's talk about passives and skills in Last Epoch because they're a little bit different than they are in most other ARPGs you're familiar with. Because there is over a hundred of them. Yes, it's a little bit confusing in the beginning, but even if you've played the game for quite a while, there are still some things you didn't know, most likely. So the first thing is, you have a character skill tree. This is what you get when you hit P on your keyboard. This is your character skill tree. And then you have skill trees for your skills, if you hit S on your keyboard. Of which you can choose five. Five skills from all these. And then you can specialize in them. This is what you do here. And then each skill tree has, or each skill has its own tree. You get passive points when you level up or from quests. This is what you see down here in your bar down below. And uh, this is your experience. And when you reach a new level, 82 in this case would be the next one. Then I get a passive point to choose. And I can put it somewhere in my passive character tree. As it stands now, the maximum points of passive points you can have is 113. 100 from your levels and 13 from quests you can do. Here yeah, and about the bottom here, this one, this shows how many points you've put in this tree. Because you know from the other video I made about the classes that each class has its mastery, which you gain access to at about level 20. For example, for the, pal uh, for the sentinel over here, our warrior kind, we have the void knight, we have the paladin and we have the forge guard. So even all the masteries has the, have their own skill tree or passive tree, I should say. At the bottom here, and you, you can see how many points you've put into this very mastery or into this very tree, I should say, for your character. And this is key because when you move up this bar, once you reach these things, you actually unlock the skills for this tree. Key thing, for example, if you start as a sentinel, you have zero in Paladin, or like in this case, in Void Knight. We don't have access to these skills, like the Volatile Reversal. We get this when we've put five points into the passive tree of the Void Knight. And you can see, even though I chose Paladin as my mastery, I can still spec into the Void Knight. Same with the Forge Guard. You can go into these up until this point with the chain. That means the skills you can unlock in a mastery, even though if you didn't choose it, are only the first ones. It's not always two, like in White Knight, it's free, you can unlock, and the Anomaly, you cannot. Well, if you want to play the Anomaly, you have to choose the Mastery for the White Knight. Otherwise, this doesn't work. But it's a key thing to note, for example, if you really want to have a Healing Hands build, right, with your Paladin, then you need to have at least four, five points in your Paladin passive tree, otherwise you can't even play this skill. You don't have it. And you see all the skills that are available. If you hit S again, you see all your skills and specializations, right? It says Sentinel over here. These ones are the base Sentinel skills. You always have access to them. And these you gain access to by unlocking points in the Sentinel passive tree, right? This basically, if you go here, it's down here. And you will have, you will gain access to these anyway because you have to put points into these because you gain access to the mastery and level 20 or 15, 20 earliest. So um, until to this point, usually you have this skill anyway. The last one, not necessary, but it's usually clever to put that in because these are usually pretty good. And these are the ones down here. These are unlocked the more you level up in your, in your base class. And these are the skills for your masteries on the right side here. The Void Knight has these ones on the right with that star. This is a special one you gain by choosing that mastery. Um, for example, for Paladin, it's Holy Aura. I don't know why it doesn't show that with the star. I guess that's a bug. And here's the Forge Strike and there it's the Erasing Strike. These are only available if you go into this mastery. Same thing with the high ones, but you can get the... Like some everything up to like 20. I think you can put 20 points into the tree always. So you can get Manifest Armor and Shield Throw. You cannot get Ring of Shields. Can get auto devouring orb you can get anomaly very simple so the mastery you have chosen is permanent right now i've been a paladin with this character so this always will be a paladin i cannot undo this if i want to play a white knight or a forge guard i would have to make a new character and choose that mastery then i can put 20 points into the paladin as well but not more than that or oh, it's 25 i don't know exactly but one thing you can change is 
the skills or the passive points you've put and you've chosen because you can respec then them later in the game. The only thing that costs is money. Like you can, if you have four in light of Raye, like I have, and you think, ah, oh, that sucks, I don't want that. You have to go, or you can't remove them. You do this by, in each big town, there's usually a guy with this brain, the brain hand over here. Look for this icon on the map, or it's this. And this is over here, it has on the head. This is the Chronomancer Lorene in the end of time. This is where you can re-specialize mastery point allocations. You click on this. And then you get the same tree you have. You can do this for each one you have. It doesn't matter. All the masteries. And you can click on one. And then it says, are you sure? Respecting one point from this node costs 1,120 gold. You currently have 200,000. And you respec or you cancel. This cost is usually higher. The higher or the more points you have put in this. For example, this has one. So it's only 280, right? This has 10. So it's 2,200. So the more points you have put in that, the, the more expensive it is to remove them again. And this is 2,000 for the 10th point, then it's like 2,800 for the 9th point, 2,600 for the 8th point, etc. So you have to think of like 10k gold to respec this one. So respecing a build does cost some money. The only two things I spend gold on in this game is stash tabs and respecking builds. Because my idea is really... There are so many builds you can play around with if you look at your skill trees, right, and the skills you have available. There are unlimited combinations, really, you can play with. So I focus on playing each character to 100 with each mastery. And then with that mastery, within that mastery, I can just respec and try a new build. I can change the passives, I can change, I can respec also the skills, I will show you later. I can change different items, so I can... In the late game, if I have a Paladin at level 100, I can play around with tons of builds all the time and see what works and what, what I like currently, right? And it's easily done. You just go to this lady, Hello, say I don't want this, remove it, etc. Now, there's one key thing. If, for example, you have this point here and you only just got this. So the bar is, and then this is now, there is way more points in this than it's showing here. But let's say the bar is full, just got full, and... You are here, and now you want to respect this one. No, I can't do it, but then it will say you you can't do that because you have one point in this, and respecting would put this bar below that, so you couldn't actually use it. That's sometimes a bit confusing. I will give it that, and sometimes a bit annoying as well because sometimes it's also bugged, where you can't respect even though you clearly have more points in that. What you usually do is you remove all of these, again, the highest ones, so the bar can go lower without issue. Then you go to this one, then you re-put them in, because you get your passive points, you re-put them in the other points. When you respec, you get that point back. So if I would be respecing 4 of these and 12 of these, then I would have sitting 16 unspent points here. So I just close this, go to P, and then I put them back in my tree. Right, Very simple. But it's a key thing. Sometimes the respecking is a bit bugged. You have to play around with it a little bit. I guess they're going to fix it over time. But as it stands now, sometimes you cannot respec an early one, even though you have enough points in here, so this wouldn't be an issue. Then you just respec this. Sorry, that was in my eye. <laughs> I respec this, and then you can then go back to this one. Um, this is also why you have to have more gold sitting around for this. It's quite expensive, but it's still great. I wouldn't do it all the time. It's still great, though, um, to play around with this. You can, Again, since you get the points back right away, you can also do this while you're running your build mid-game. Like, if you're level 30, you realize, okay, I actually spec this wrongly. So you can respec and put it in a different point again very easily. Another key thing, sometimes passive points give you a specific skill. For example, here, the Divine Bolt. Whenever you hit an enemy with a melee attack, you have a 20% chance to cast a Divine Bolt. And whenever you see this underlined white text, you can hit Alt, or keep hitting it, push it down, and then it shows you what this skill actually is and how much damage it's doing right now, because there's no other way to see that. The Divine Bolt is doing right now 8,800 damage. I cannot see this anywhere else. And you can also see the scaling tags and the increased damage, etc. This is when you sometimes get extra skills from that. You have to go in here and click on it to see what the damage actually is. Another key thing, 
If you choose a mastery, you see down here, you gain passive bonuses, right? You can actually see this. Hold up. Am I in the way? Eh, mostly. For example, in this case, right above my head. You deal increased fire, lightning and physical damage equal to your percent health remaining. Then let's remove me for a second. 1% increased healing effectiveness per point of attunement. And then down here, you see you have a mastery skill. That's the Holy Aura. As I mentioned earlier, this is only accessible through the Paladin Mastery and no other way. So you want to look here what your passive bonuses actually are. The Void Knight, for example, has increased melee and void damage. More melee attack increase, so that's great. The Forge Guard, physical and fire resistance. So you want to check what the passive points actually are, or the passive bonuses, for your very class. That's it about the passives. That should cover most of it um, for you to play around with. Now for the skills. The skills are also a whole different beast in this game. It's very different to any game I ever played, to be honest. Because each skill can or like has its own XP bar and can go from 1 to 20 by leveling it up. It can go even higher if you have specific items that give it bonus points. But for example, healing hands over here, you see in the top left. Level 19 plus 1. It's plus 1 because of an item I have that gives it an extra point. Usually it would be at 90. And it also says accelerated XP gain until level 20. And this is the XP bar it has. So it levels up. When your skill leveled up, you see this in the bottom right. Then it's that skill is showing up there. You click on it. Then you come right to the skill and can put your passive points in there. This works from a usage point exactly like the passives. For example, you want to have this one. And you click on it, now you've chosen that. Great. Now I have one available, so I want to go, I want to put this in the Divine Catalyst. So I click on it. There it is. It's gone now. Now it's in the Divine Catalyst. I have five or five. Now what you can do is you can respec that right away without any cost, uh, any gold cost, but there is another cost you have to think of. If you respec, you can either choose to remove skill points, certain skill points. Or you can despecialize the entire skill. Meaning, if you've chosen Healing Hands as the skill you want to put more power into, you can remove that entirely and choose a different one. One of all these. Usually this is then just a black plus. You click on it and you choose one of the skills you want to go with. And then you can maximize it and change things. This is the despecializing. There is one key thing though about this. If you despecialize, there is a minimum specialized level. Meaning, now this is at 20, right? If I respec and despecialize the skill, it will be sitting at 10. So I lose 10 points on this whole tree. This is key. And this is also why it's recommended not to respec or remove skill points while you're leveling up. Because then you lose a lot of power. Late game, when you're level 80 like I am, you can easily despecialize the skill and then you can still shred enough so you level up faster and you get um, get it back up to speed fast. Really at the end game, because you have accelerated XP gain until it's back to this level from its minimum level. But um, late game, when you run a monolith or two or three monoliths, you usually back up to 20 pretty fast. Or at least to higher levels. Um, so you get there fast again at the end, but be careful. You will not gain 20 if you despecialize it in the other skill, you will gain 10 as it is. And this is also, it starts lower. It starts at 3 or 4, I believe. And then it goes up the minimum specialized level. The same is true if you remove a point just like that. If I click on this and I want to remove the Divine Catalyst to 4 or 5, if I basically respec one node, then I will not gain that point back. Okay? I will then be sitting at 19 here. It will be gone. But, of course, the accelerated XP gain will hit in, so until you are back to 20, it will be faster than usual. But remember, if you respec now, you will be losing these points until you are back at this level. Okay? This is a key thing to note. Sometimes it's very useful. I mean, not just for playing entirely different builds, but sometimes you chose something and realize, okay, it doesn't do any damage, so you play around with it, so you see, okay, that sucks. You remove it. But bear in mind, you have to kill some enemies again and gain XP for you to gain that power back in this very skill. All right? That's a little bit confusing sometimes, especially in the beginning, but you get a, the hang, hang of it pretty fast. 
Now, these do unlock these five. You start with just one at level four, right? And then this comes at eight, 20, 35, and level 50. Where you get your specialization points to unlock or to make your skills better. Um, yeah, if you click on the skill, like if you're in this, if you just click S and you're here, then you can just click on the skill and look through the entire tree, what it can do. For example, this is the Void Cleave, but you can also turn this entirely into fire damage. These are the, the key things. All of Void's cleave base void damage is converted to fire. Consequently, this damage scales with increase to fire damage, not increase to void damage. This is also key when you then go down here, you see these scaling tags. For example, this says fire spell buff. There is a point in healing hands down here, the Seraph Blade. Where it says healing hands is converted into a melee attack. It scales with melee damage. If I would have this, then it would say melee, meaning now you can use melee attack buffs in your in your items to scale your damage. This is key. You don't underestimate what these trees does. They completely change how a skill works sometimes. For example, you can also, I think it was this, yeah, Cleric's Hammer, meaning if you do a melee attack with any other skill, Healing Hands is auto-cast, so you might not even need to cast Healing Hands yourself. As I said, this one turns it into a melee attack entirely. There's also this one, turns it into a channeled ability, and this one also rains beam from the sky, dealing fire damage while you do that. So these trees completely change how a skill works. This one also uh, yeah, makes it into a blink, so now you can actually blink at the location with it. So don't underestimate these trees, and sometimes it's a little note on the side, some, some little thing that has a huge implication for a build. So you want to spend some time in these, right? And learn what all these do. I mean, it's a hundred and, what is it, 30 or what? Trees, so there's a lot to learn, I guess. You don't have to know all of them. This is why we have all the build guides and why I'll do all the builds, build guides when I explain these. But if you're the kind of guy who's interested in that, you can really click on one and you have to read through all these. And sometimes it's little details, really little details where it says on it. Um, that changes in build entirely. For example, there was uh, with the Warlock, there is a little note that's just on the side somewhere here that says, you can't just put one point in it. It looks very random, but it says in the second paragraph that you gain more damage for 4% damage for each uncapped cold resistance. And the key is the uncapped. So it's just that one word that it says uncapped cold resistance. Because that means everything that goes above the 75 limit still gives you more damage on your build. And this makes a whole build for that character. Just this one little node in your skill tree. So you really gotta look into what these do. And in the beginning it's not that necessary. Um, you, you just click what sounds good. But if you want to maximize your builds later and go into higher corruption especially, you will have to look into what to do with these and read through all of them what they do. So there's some time investment in that. Usually when you just play through the campaign regularly, they at 20, they usually max out when your character is level 75-ish, something like that. That's where you get to 20 on all of them. And they some of them even look different also. I didn't even mention this. For example, with the Warlock, there is this Kefanic Fissure thing, right? And you can choose a Blood Gulch version of it. So it goes from greenish necrotic fire damage into completely red all blood. So they look even look different. Like the Smite, for example, also has here the... Uh, it's converted to lightning, so now it's a lightning bolt from the sky and not the, the fire, holy fire bolt. So it also changes how they look. Now there are affixes that can increase them. Uh, where do I have it? For example, this one, the Cinder Song on your items says plus one to fire spells. Meaning, this plus one thing means any spell I have that does fire damage Right? You can see this here in the scaling tags, fire, gets plus one. This is this, the blue one, the plus one. This this is from items. Even though like I'm not even at level 20 with the skill, it would be at 19. It's getting to 20 fast. Once it's 20, this is at 21. Okay? So items can increase the level you can put in your skills as well, and sometimes a lot. There are items that put two, three, or even four plus on your skills. So you can go up to 28, I've seen, I think is the highest on a skill so you can pretty much 
put the entire tree almost in in the skill then it's just super insane all right that's it for the skills and the spells spells skills spells passives you know everything about these now um this is how it works and you will get a hang of it pretty fast but to maximize this there's a lot to put in and but I, I like this a lot that every single skill has its own tree where it can respect the entire thing that just gives unlimited combinations of builds to the game and this is also why there are so many so i hope you like this i hope it helped let me know in the comments if you have any more questions if anything is unclear and um, if you enjoyed it in general and if you liked it also think about subscribing thank you very much and i will see you in the next video